My dearly beloved in Christ, this morning I would like to take for our theme the epistle. And in today's epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians, we have many counsels, many wonderful bits of advice we can apply. But I would like to concentrate on these words. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows in the flesh, from the flesh also will reap corruption. But he who sows in the spirit, from the spirit will reap life everlasting. This is such an important truth for us to keep in mind that everything we do will have a consequence. That every act of penance, every act of self-denial, every prayer will have its reward. And likewise, every sin will have its punishment, its accounting to be rendered. Sadly, so many people in the world are deceived by the devil to thinking that they can get away with something. But with Almighty God, who is all-knowing, no one gets away with anything. And in fact, even in this world, we see that for the most part, sooner or later, someone's misdeeds come to life. How often have you read it in the news that some public figure might have been a politician or an actor or a, you know, an athletic star, someone that's prominent, falls from grace because some circumstance, some misdeed of the past came to light, maybe even many years later. And in God's justice, often even in this life, an accounting must be rendered. But above all, in eternity. And that is something we must always remember. That we will one day render to God an account for all of our thoughts, words, and deeds. He who sows in the flesh will reap corruption. He who sows in the spirit will reap life everlasting. What a man sows, that he will also reap. Now, this reminds us of judgment, of eternity, of everlasting life, everlasting punishment, or everlasting reward. And I would like to recommend a book to you. I think every Catholic should read it. And it's a wonderful little book called The Four Last Things by Father Martin von Cochum. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. As it says in scripture, remember thy last end and thou wilt never sin. The problem is that we so easily forget about these great eternal truths. Why did God make us? What is life all about? And we are here for no other purpose than that we will prepare for a, an everlasting happiness with God in heaven. There is a wonderful uh, section from the Book of Wisdom in the Old Testament that is read on feasts of martyrs during the Paschal season. And paraphrasing it is something like this. The wicked are crying out. They're, they're lamenting at the last day, at the great judgment. And they said, those who are living good lives, we esteemed their end without honor. We mocked them. We ridiculed them. We brought them low by our unjust treatment. Look at how now they are raised up above us. And we, now we are suffering for our misdeeds. Think of the great judgment day when all mankind will be gathered before the throne of our Lord. When our Lord ascended into heaven and the disciples were gazing as our Lord gradually ascended into heaven and finally was taken out of their sight and the two angels by them said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This same Jesus who has been taken from you will come in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. Imagine that last day when the trumpet will sound 
And the bodies of all of those that have ever lived will be raised from the dead, reunited to their souls. And our Lord will come in great power and majesty, seated on the clouds, surrounded by angels. And he will come to judge all mankind. And every human being that has ever lived will be gathered together in one place. And then there will be the judgment and every single deed, good or bad, will be revealed in the sight of all. That thought should be frequently present to us as a motivation to help us love and serve God, to carry our cross. And of course, the wicked will lament, they will cry out for the mountains to fall upon them, to save them from the wrath of our Lord. His very countenance, as the author in this book points out, they will strive to hide from his countenance, which will be so severe, demanding an accounting. Whereas on the other hand, those who have lived good Catholic lives, they will see our Lord's welcoming and pleasing countenance, saying, Come, blessed of my Father, into the kingdom prepared for you. How foolish are the people of the world, those who live only for this life. They say stupid things like, Well, if I go to hell, at least my friends will be there. Can you imagine something so utterly foolish? As the author here in this book points out, the more persons there are in hell, the greater is the suffering. And they won't enjoy any companionship from their former partners in sin. They'll hate them all the more. You led me into sin. And that person will say, no, it was you. And they will hate one another because in hell there is no love. There is only hatred. And so we must strive to carry our cross and to think of eternity. We're always preparing for that judgment day, for eternity. Let us be wise. Listen to the words of St. Paul. God is not mocked. This is one of the amazing truths, hard to understand for us. Why does God tolerate evil in this life? It is a mystery. We know that he will not tolerate evil forever, but for now, he tolerates it. All of the blasphemy, all of the evil, all of the crime, all of the heinous sins that are committed every day, why does God allow it to continue? It is a mystery. But one day, it will all end. And everyone will be called to render an accounting. God is not mocked. What a man sows, that he will also reap. Let us sow every day good deeds, good thoughts, good words, virtuous living, realizing that all of, all of these sacrifices, all of the trouble that it takes us to flee the occasion of sin to practice virtue, will have its reward, and that reward will be everlasting. Let us keep our thoughts focused on eternity and live for heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.